All right, guys, so here we go with the test flight of the Sector 5 V3 by HGLRC. It's looking really nice. I got a 4S battery, a 1300 milliamp China Hobby Line battery, so we're going to test it out with that battery first. So let's go ahead and get started here. TX16S. All right, and plugging it in. Okay, ready to go. So let's go ahead and check it out. Line of sight with a 4S. Okay, this is gonna be my very first flight here. So this is the maiden flight. I did a hover test and that was just about it. physical position of my throttle position right about 50 to 60 with the 4S. Seems to have pretty decent amount of power even with just a 4S so let's do a little punch okay <laughs> looks very promising because with a 4S it seems to be pretty decent here so let's check it out one more time full on punch yeah that's good enough <laughs> And the tune seems to be very nice. Wow. I think I'm going to be happy flying this thing with just a 4S. Okay. Uh, can imagine the 6-inch uh, version and the 7-inch version. Oh, yeah. This thing's got more than enough power, guys. Oh, very nice, very nice. Okay, gonna bring it in for a landing and try it out with some FPV here. There we go. Okay, so here we go with our first FPV flight. Uh, we got 12 satellites, so we are good to go. Let me just go ahead and go into the OSD menu to see if everything is working. There we go, our PIDs in profile one. And let me get out and go into the features, go into the VTX. And here we go. I got it set to A7 and power set to 200 milliwatts. All right, so OSD is working fine. Nice. Save and exit. So let's go and check this thing out. Arming. And look at the house for the home direction. There we go. Our very first FPV flight. So it's got GPS. And so on the left, we got the satellite count. We got the home distance. We got the speed and we got the altitude. And I'm going to circle around myself a few times to make sure that the home direction arrow is pointing at myself. Yep, and it looks like it's doing a good job. Okay. So far, very smooth. And the Cadex Rattel is looking really nice. Oh, nice and smooth. So the tune that it comes with. It's pretty decent here. A little bit of prop wash, but that's just about nothing at all. A little off on my 
flips because the rates are set to beta flight default here. Oh yeah, but it's nice and locked in. So the default PID settings that is preset is very nice with the 4S. And we got the XM Plus and also the MT800 milliwatt full size VTX. So it shouldn't be a problem going the distance here. Okay, right about 300 meters. And let me do a turnaround. A little bit of static. But that is just awesome over here, out in the field. Oh yeah, this thing is really nice, nice and smooth. And with the 4S, and these 1900 kV motors, it's good enough for me. Oh yeah, very nice guys. Very little. Prop wash too. I think I got really close to myself on that one. <laughs> oh yeah, very, very nice. Feels right at home already. Position my hand here, and looks like we're getting a pretty decent amount of flight time. This is a relatively new battery, 1300 milliamp CNHL 4S, and we're getting about four minutes of flight time here. Oh, yeah, very nice. Oh yeah, definitely decent. Let me go ahead and bring it in. Voltage is starting to go down. So a little over four minutes of flight time with the 4S, 1300 milliamp. There we go. so here we go with a 5s battery and we got 12 satellites so we are good to take off so let's check it out with the 5s i'm still on profile one on the pid setting so i'm just circling around myself to make sure i'm established at home here Okay, feels smooth, feels like it's got a little bit more power. Pretty locked in. Little bit of prop wash. There's a full throttle punch sideways oh 
definitely tons of hang time versus the 4S. Uh, so this thing is really nice with a 5S. Very, very nice. And it's still very well tuned for a 5S. Can feel a little bit of prop wash. Oh yeah, very nice guys. Oh, this is really nice. A very nice performer. Let me go away from myself a little bit. Oh yeah, more than enough power with the 5S. So with the 6S, you should have a little bit more power. So this is a really, really nice quadcopter setup. And, you know, 4S is nice, but get the 6S version with the 1900 kV motors. You can still fly it with the 4S, a 5S. And we're going to be testing it out with the 6S very soon. So, it looks like I'm going to get better flight time with the 5S, 1300 milliamp. And it is a China Hobby Line 1300 milliamp 5S battery that I got on here. And it's still very smooth. Yeah, not a lot of prop wash. There you go. I'm trying to induce some prop wash. You know, I have a strange feeling that we are going to see a little bit more prop wash with the same PID settings on 6S. Oh, this thing is so smooth. I think this is going to be one of my favorite flyers pretty soon. And these FXS5 props do a very good job. Oh yeah, very nice. Let's go ahead and bring it in for a landing. We're getting about the same amount of flight time here. A little over four minutes. But wow, I'm loving it. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and test it out with a 6S battery this time. I got a China Hobby Line 6S Mini Star 1000 milliamp. So let's go ahead and check it out. Transmitter already on. So let's plug it in to power. The PID setting is still in profile one. That was preset. So let's test it out with the 6S. There we go, 6S power. Uh, definitely feels a lot better. Oh, look at that. It's just moving now. <laughs> oh yeah, Jesus. I lost orientation. Let's go ahead and bring it in. <laughs> oh yeah, this thing is like light as a feather now, basically. Okay, let's do a little punch. 
Oh yeah, screamer. One more punch. Oh yeah. And this 1000 milliamp size for a 6S, I think it's just about right. I have another 1300 milliamp 6S, and so we're gonna do the uh, FPV with that one, so. Oh yeah, no problem at all. Holy cow! Oh yeah, very nice. Excellent quad. And I don't hear that much prop wash or anything, even with the 6S, with the PIDs that's preset. So very nice. So let's go ahead and bring it in. And FPV. Okay, so here we go with a 6S battery and we got 15 satellites. So let's go and check it out. Oh yeah, jumps right off the table. Establish home direction. And this one is a 1300 milliamp 6S China Hobby line. Okay, home direction looks good. Oh yeah, <laughs> look at that. Here's the uh, 150 meter bush. <laughs> Little bit of prop wash. But still seems to be pretty decent. A little off on my flips. It is not my rates, so it's slightly off there. Oh, tons of hang time. Let's just see how fast it yaw spinned. Awesome. Was that I don't know <laughs> but I just have so much hang time I just stayed up there <laughs> yeah if you want hang time boys uh, six ass is the way to do it Jesus and it's still very smooth considering it is the same set PIDs so you can lower it down just a little bit but it's doing just fine right here Oh yeah, this thing is really nice. So you can fly it with the 4S, 5S, 6S. You know, depending on what your mood is. Very nice. There's a little bit of prop wash. Let me induce some here. Yeah, there's a little bit of prop wash, but you can tune that out. Just lower down the values just a little bit and you should be good to go here. But look at the hang time with just one punch. Very nice. <laughs> Felt like I was staying up there for eternity. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is nice, guys. That's why everybody's changing over to 6S. I'm, I'm still liking the 4S. 4S has enough power for me. So even with this quad cutter, I'm probably just going to be flying it with the 4S. 
Okay, almost four minutes with the 1300 milliamp 6S bat. And we still got enough fly time with it. Looks like Oh yeah, just very nice and smooth. So let's go ahead and bring it in because it is going to deplete just like that. There we go. All right, that is our flight test with a 6S battery. Okay, so here we go once again, but this time we're going to check out the GPS fail-safe rescue. Uh, on a stick as well as actual fail safe rescue. I got 15 satellites, so let's get going. I have another 4S battery on here, so I'm going to go ahead and circle around myself. Make sure the home arrow is pointing to me so it'll come back here instead of somewhere else and looks like it's doing that so the failsafe rescue or gps rescue you need to go beyond 100 meters for it to work so i'm at 250 meters so i'm going to go ahead and flick my gps rescue switch and throttle all the way down and check it out it is heading back towards myself here. Okay. There we go. I'm going to flick it back and retake control. Okay. So GPS rescue works on a switch. And I have it set to my auxiliary 5 as shown in the previous video. So whenever you're disoriented, you don't know where you are, like, you know, you're flying around and everything looks the same. You can flick that switch and get yourself out of trouble. So let's go ahead and test out the actual fail safe rescue. So there's this little hump right here. I'm flying over it right here. Kind of hard to tell it's a hump or not, but there's the hump right here. So I'm going to go on this side of the field the opposite side of the hump and instead of going the distance what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna land right here you see my car way over there on the other side of the field I'm gonna land right here so that'll lose connection there you go RX loss and look at that it is rising up by itself and fail safe has kicked in I have my throttle all the way down to zero it's gonna Go up to that altitude that is preset in beta flight and make itself back. So I'm going to move my sticks and that will get you out of the fail safe GPS rescue. So this is one of the f first ones or one of the few quadcopters, freestyle quadcopters that come with a GPS module already built into the quadcopter right out of the box. So all you got to do is turn it on. And activate it in beta flight and you got yourself a GPS quad so you can fly anywhere you want and once you get disconnected you get a fail save the GPS rescue will kick in and bring you back but don't be flying under trees and obstacles because it doesn't avoid those kind of stuff so you're gonna have to retake control right away all right, guys, so I think that'll do it for this video of the HGLRC Sector 5 V3. I'm going to go ahead and bring it in for a landing here. So if you want to check out this Sector 5 V3 for yourself, link is down below. And I do believe the 6-inch and the 7-inch versions are not out yet. I don't know if they'll be out as a bind and fly unit but the frames are available so you want to build your own you can build your own or you can buy the bind and fly 
sector five and perhaps change out the frame if you want to go six or seven inch all right guys so that'll do it for this video thank you so much for tuning in and watching have a great day and we'll see you again next time nice